they conducted a small survey while they were collecting some kind of questionnaire and women were given slightly higher prices because they would buy anyway. Guys, on the huge screen of the iPhone 14 Pro, I see four pixels and I chose the girl in the red dress, for example. I see four pixels that I don't see. So with this step, we are destroying our entire previous step in which we talk about some kind of attachment. Let's just take it easy with monetization. I looked at what you have. Everything is based on pinups. That's absolutely clear. A game with such a CPI cannot be based on advertising. I have a few questions from when I played. Firstly, for example, I didn't see any cheap offer in the first place. The first offer they made to me was $3. Have you tested any other prices for this limited offer and how do they perform? Of course, we pushed and tested. Everything is constantly changing there, sometimes with marketing mistakes, you know, sometimes without them. So now we are testing another theory. We had an external audit that suggested raising prices to see how it would look. Mm -hmm or how it will affect the paying audience, for example, those in the USA and everything else. There were $2 initial offers and their conversion rates showed quite poor subsequent payments. That is the conversion to the second payment was very, very low, but there were some problems with this. Again, as Dima started to explain, now the guys are trying to lower the entry threshold into the game so that everything is quick and scary. Therefore, some experiments were not very controlled. The low price showed a low return. The price showed a low return on the second payment. At $3, it performed a bit better. What did you see now? $3.99 or $2.99? I'll tell you now. I just took a screenshot. Well, $3.99, yes. Yes, that should be it. Well, there were the initial ones. And again, well, okay, the offer separately and mobile and web. Oh, sorry. Not even $3.995, $4.99, $4.99. Ah, four ninety nine. Actually, it should be in three ninety nine. That's why I asked because for the first payment, in my opinion, and as competitors showed, this is indeed quite a large payment. Because when King entered the market and looked at the audience, they initially set the price up to two dollars. They had one ninety nine for the first limited offer. Then they started increasing it. You did this yourself at one time, for example. Today, your direct and major competitors were possibly mentioned. Family Island and Millsoft were there too, and they also tried. Before that, Stark Games, Wiser. Yes, 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 yes. I promised the guys an interview with the producer who worked on this game for five years. He's a good friend of mine. And there, in the same way, they tried to make the first one a bit lower for example, but you can do this if you haven't done such an A-B test, firstly. Secondly, if you already have some data regarding the country, where what conversion is done, with what price, then this can be used. That is, not to make one payment for everyone, for example, even in the Nordic countries, for example, in Finland, Sweden, there will be one price. In Switzerland, I don't know, in Denmark, there will be another possibly well like you have for example in the usa and i understand that it also covers a bit of canada or not geo just to understand no it's more in the usa canada is insignificant so in the usa you can even look if anything if your internal pricing system allows it by states because there is for example california which gives well, the standard of living will be significantly different from that of Ohio. And therefore, even this can be taken into account and, for example, bring better conversion. This is the first thing. The second thing I noticed raised questions for me. This second offer. I haven't reached the third one yet. The logic is that you get a reward from the chest, I think. And you click the first, click the second reward because it is collected. And the third one is already... I can show it now. Ah, uh, is this the purchase chain? Yes, yes, yes. Here it is. Have you tried framing it? Highlighting this third offer, for example, to make it different from the previous one? 
just visually. Yes. Oh, yes, there was a version of the interface. Honestly, I probably can't answer that question, but, well, you recommend highlighting it. Yes, I recommend highlighting it and somehow adding that the user receives some bonuses from it, so constant triggers are needed. Actually, this thing needs to be adjusted almost every month, to be honest, because everything changes. You know, the same trends. How many were there before? Two gifts with some purchase. Now it's the whole screen. Now it's hard to control, plus seasonality plays a role. Some holidays are coming. Events can be adjusted for this. There is a lot to use. But we do all this with one logical goal. We need to increase the user's RPPU, and we need to increase their conversion. All of this. So, as you already said, everything depends on the cohort, on where everything is purchased. But if it's the USA, for example, do I understand correctly that your large audience is women? Yes. I don't know the current statistics, but two to three years ago, the most solvent and paying customers among those who made any purchases in games were women. And therefore, some companies with such games conducted a small survey. Like male-female, well, they collected some kind of questionnaire or they did it through Facebook login. And women were given slightly higher prices because they would buy anyway, thus slightly improving their RPPU, of course, on this. Yes, a bit unfair, but yes. Well, unfair, not unfair, I say again. We gathered here about business. No, no, I understand you. We have two logics constantly arguing. Because this cannot be done on the web. Because on the web, as Dima noted, there is huge communication even among new users. That is, a new cohort comes to you today and their Facebook immediately ties everything to the community. And there the community, hop, I saw such an offer. She sees an offer for five ninety nine and sees it for seven ninety nine herself. That's it, it starts scandal with pitchforks. We have only about 10% of these letters, so it's not even worth discussing. Uh, yes, yes, but still. Yes, but still. But because of this, our guys are still afraid to change anything on the web. Look, you can use this... For example, not at the very beginning of the game, but shifted a bit to more, as you said, interesting offers. Conduct some kind of split test and see how it goes. Just, if you have more female users, they won't be able to create such a hype if a man goes and writes, I have $3.99 and my wife has $8, for example, if that offer was there. Because they both play. I don't think it will be on the audience where you can test it, but if it works, you will improve the average check situation, meaning all your spends, ROAS will look a bit better in the model. As for the fact that there is such a thing, you might have seen it in Gardenscape and so on, that they started using rewarded video. Not interstitial, nothing, but started using rewarded advertising for users who do not purchase anything at all. There are also two options here. The first option is to work on separating this entire group of non-paying users. This, as I understand it, is about 70-90% of users, if not more, in the app, and try to monetize them using rewarded video. But this should be done sparingly because your lifespan in the game, I think, is on average around 30 plus days. Let's say, to generalize very broadly, around 60. I don't know, I'm just estimating, maybe observing what I played. You can also calculate this, you have an analyst for this. How many you need to show during the lifetime, for example, the user's benefit. Your CPI is very high, for example, $20 and so on. This is a gigantic number for ad monetization. But if you can create a hybrid for such users, you can, for example, make it so that over 60 or 45 days, they need to watch a certain number of rewarded videos, impressions, break this down per day, so how many they can watch in a day. And you get the amount you can, for example, at least at least get from advertising. There is also the fact that advertising sometimes, for example, pushes conversions. 
because when something is difficult for the user, you give them the option to use it, and it might make their life easier, but then they need to pay again to some extent, and they think, okay, I'll buy it. If it's not very expensive, they might think, it's better to pay than to watch this ad, or create a block where the next ad can be watched in 30 minutes, for example. And if they don't want to wait, they might prefer to pay. This could also work. The third thing that is currently very hyped is the hyper-casual segment, which is changing a lot and turning into a more mid-core thing, for example, in general. So there is a good example, a game called Mob Control. They introduced a mechanic called skippable ads. These are tickets that users purchase with real money, which they can use to skip watching rewarded videos and still receive the reward. This could also be one of the triggers you can add for users. So you have rewarded video. If you see that the conversion is not improving because too many rewarded videos are being watched, you can block it altogether. Leave only rewarded video. I mean, block it for real money. Leave rewarded video and skippable ads. Sell skippable ads in packs of 10, 15, 20 and use them in a bubble. And do this for users who definitely won't pay. I think you have a productive model and you understand the user's behavior paradigm by the third or fourth day and you can use percentages. What I once saw was a maximum of 65 to 70 models predicting which cluster to place the user in. You might already have better results because of more statistics. And for such users, you can add options like bypassing rewarded videos, but spending money on something. Interesting idea. And you mentioned a hybrid model. So like Township, where it doesn't show ads to payers, right? Yes, they pay and don't see ads. A hybrid model in such a mid-core segment or strategy segment means you need to understand very clearly when and how the user will convert. If he doesn't pay you money 100%, 70%, then you simply launch him, for example, into another monetization stream where he has rewarded video, where he has Skypeable ads, for example. He may even have the store itself change, perhaps in some cases. If he doesn't pay, then why give him a lot to add these options? He won't pay anyway. But if you reduce it, in some way restrict it, in a manner that still allows for the benefit of viewing advertisements or skipping them and purchasing these tickets in order to keep enjoying and watching content in a seamless manner, then you can sustain your user retention levels. You can prevent causing significant damage to the churn rate and you can at least enhance the engagement of this particular cohort of users who do not pay anything at all. And he will simply have the option, for example, to either watch the ad or, I don't know, skip it because he bought the tickets. And it's very good to train the user to this. So he starts playing, you see, on the second or third day that he won't pay. You launch him into this flow and, for example, give him some feasible reward. Look, for example, here's a ticket and here's 20 of some hard currency as a reward. Or use the ticket, don't watch the reward, get this currency, for example, like this. Regarding the question that was asked and discussed earlier, whether it's necessary to split this ad at all, it's quite possible. Okay, understood. The question is... I'll say that this topic has generally stalled and worked significantly better halfway through, especially when it comes out. They tried something, connected it, it drips a little, some small amount, and it works. But here, I think you rightly said, the question is really about balance. Even showing me the video, it seems to me that this thing somehow, for example, will improve my gaming experience. And there, if the rewards are practical, they probably start to interest people. And there, I think the problems are mainly balance-related, most likely. There's nothing to replace them with. I understand.
balance. It's still difficult to calculate everything, but I highly recommend using it a bit like, you know, a game within a game. That is, launch this flow for users and it will be separate because it will be easier for you to balance this way. No, 100%. If, for example, separation is quite possible, then it's generally quite normal. Technically, it's 100% possible, for example, to do it through remote config. If your developers start saying, no, it's impossible, you... No, no, no. We know it's possible. I mean, knowing that you can use the most productive modules. That is, if a person has already paid, it's easy to do. And if he hasn't paid, then to predict, we will now show him ads, and he won't pay tomorrow because of this. Look, you can always leave, say, a backdoor for yourself after some time, for example. For example, after one week or two weeks when the user is on this path, show him a really cool offer that works 100% for you with the highest possible conversion and see if he responds again. Watch the ad. Yes, and look, working with ads is becoming easier and easier now, for example. Firstly, we can help you with this by providing an SDK. You install it, and we do almost everything for you. You just need to install and integrate our SDK. Secondly, there are now many bidding systems. I mean, all ads now, all networks are moving to a bidding configuration. So there are no big delays in showing ads or anything like that, for example. Everything works instantly, especially now when technology allows for great caching and it lives there. It's a very simple thing that, if not used, can actually, to some extent, cheat you out of money a bit. So contact us or find someone yourself or contact us and we'll do it beautifully for you. What percentage of those who become paying users after the 20th day, when does it close for you of those who played until the 20th day? Yes, yes, for example. Roughly speaking, we don't have exactly that kind of statistics. We have the statistics of payers in general for the month. And it's in percentages like it's a bit. It's really a bit. Moreover, we have in principle a huge array of players who never pay and they just exist. They can also be shown ads in principle. But I realized that it would be great for us in principle to calculate the maximum payment period after which we consider that the player will no longer be a payer. This figure, of course, would help here. But we don't have such a figure in general. Sorry to interrupt. You should have such statistics that somewhere... Well, I understand. Again, if you calculate and figure out that the majority, more than 50%, make the first payment very close to the first opening. It's somewhere around 48 hours, approximately. Up to 48, it should be. That's right, that's right. They make the second payment if they stay in the game for more than seven days. This is also from those who paid, for example. Almost guaranteed if they stay for more than seven days, they make the second payment. You can start with this. That is, you need to carefully and thoroughly observe user behavior during the first 48 hours. For example, how they click, how they tap, how much time they spend in the game based on playtime. I think you will find that these players who make the first payment, then the second and then the third and so on, have a chain reaction. This is not the deadline I'm talking about. In general, it's not difficult to do. This is the period in which we, I'll be honest with you, it's difficult because you have to, you will see, for example, very interesting things, but you will need to level them out with coefficients. If you see that one user is not very different from another, that is, you don't derive some coefficient, and thanks to this, you will see this small difference. You can combine them because, with a high probability, the second users will complete it within 55 hours of opening, if not within 48 hours. We have this curve. We have it for payers. We have... I'm saying it's not difficult, not because it's generally easy, but because we already have statistics. That's my point of view. We have a curve for payers, showing how exactly they convert into payers. 
There is a normal distribution that revolves around specific events in our game, which we actually want to scale. Based on this, we can determine after which day it won't be 48 hours, but rather around day 4, probably 3 to 4. After this day, we can say that if you haven't paid within 3 days, we can add some ads and see what happens. In this format, yes. Another important thing. Those who didn't pay within the first 4 days have significantly worse retention than those who did. Yes, in general, the retention of payers and non-payers, for example, differs, abstractly speaking, sometimes by years, but in fact very significantly. A person who, for example, doesn't pay leaves much faster, many times faster. Why am I talking about applying this faster within four days? Because... Ah, uh, so they don't have time to leave, e, and we can monetize more impressions, for example. Yes, yes, I understand, I understand, yes, that makes sense. So, well, thank you, Dennis, thank you. I understand that we are done. I want to add a classic example. I have a beloved wife who plays Merge Mansion. They started showing her ads on the 360th day, that is a year after she started playing. So, after a year, they identified her as a non-payer and started showing ads. Anyway, Sasha, now it's your turn. I'll start with the software. It's very funny. People who have been doing web development all their lives make standard mistakes when porting. We say the following. We define our target audience as women. That's the basis. Let's say 80 to 20, we drew an ideal portrait for ourselves, all that. Therefore, we are on iOS. We are only interested in women who have a modern iPhone, who, for example, theoretically, will pay us. A woman from Zimbabwe with Android 8.0, for example, does not interest us. That's why we have an icon in the App Store. Here's the guy. Everything is cool. Everything is beautiful. Everything converts and so on. Great. Then I go in and, guys, what do I see? I see an absolute port in which I have... A pop-up appears on the first step, a character selection pop-up. It makes sense that I'm shown a girl there because I'm the target audience. I'm a girl. I choose a girl, hair, something else. Super cool. The only point to consider, ideally, is that if we say our target audience is girls, then everything should be beautiful and cute. You have 90% girls, 10% boys who consider themselves girls figuratively. Make an avatar for them just because you have 80% girls doesn't mean you should forget about the other 20%. What I see, absolutely, it's important to note that everything I say is subjective. I see a completely unappealing pop-up. This is a selection pop-up aimed at creating associations with this character. I should associate myself with this character in the game. It seems unappealing. Ideally, we try to connect the empathy and mentality of our target audience with this choice. But if this mentality, this connection is insufficient or completely lacking, it seems that first, the pop-up itself is small. Second, it would be nice to rotate the character. If we are talking about graphics, it's 2D. But overall, since it's all done in Unity, it might be possible to make the first start screen with this model in 3D with some idle animations, and when I change the hairstyle, a super effect. Right now, everything happens quite dryly. I don't know the drop-off rate at this step, this funnel. Maybe it's, I don't know, 1.5% drop-off, and then we say everything is okay. Or maybe it's the opposite, I don't know, 8 or 10%, and then we say it's not okay, and maybe we should think about this step and work on it. So, what do we get? Yes, by the way, in Family Island, this step is absent only because you already have a family there. But in our game, the second character is added a bit later. Therefore, yes, it makes sense to determine who I would be more interested in playing as. Great, we have decided on this step. We say that this step is aimed at empathy and attaching me to the character. Excellent. I chose a character. Then they show me the start screen. Guys, on the big screen of the iPhone 14 Pro, 
I see four pixels. And I chose a girl in a red dress. I see four pixels that I can't see. So with this step, we destroy our previous step where we talked about some kind of attachment. Again, it's all subjective. It seems that at this moment, we need to zoom in a bit, show this character, rotate them, play an animation, ho-ho, everything is okay, great, right? And thus increase, enhance the effect we tried to achieve in the previous step. At the same time, if we talk about web screen sizes, the character would look normal and the pop-up would be large and the character in the pop-up would be large and on the main screen, they would be visible because when I look, you correctly set the focal point. It seems to work. I had a clear feeling that after the first step, I was abandoned. I saw a huge, deep game without any tutorial. The tutorial, in my understanding, looked like this. An arrow, I clicked something, another super dry window opened, and I need to do something. At the same time, everything is zoomed out on a huge zoom out, and I still don't really see where my character is. It seems that the tutorial might need to be much longer because this is our threshold, the user's movement from one point to another. And another point, I don't know if you conducted experiments, any A-B tests, introduced the tutorial, measured this funnel, if it all went through. But in any case, if not, I would try to guide the player through the steps for a bit longer, placing events there, step one, step two, step three, step four, building a funnel, and then seeing at which of the, I don't know, 15, 20 steps, there are the most drop-offs, and possibly fix it there. Here, it's not so much from a technical or game design perspective, but from the perspective of me as a player, I just felt abandoned. There are a lot of elements, a lot of things, and I was given only one arrow. Once. This is a very minor point. The next one will be very minor too, but I didn't like how my character walks into the water. So basically, I tried to collect something that was lying on the water. I clicked and it was very close to the shore. What did I see? I saw some kind of super awkward animation where the character reaches the shore in one tick. This character submerges up to their eyes in the water and there's a log nearby. I was like, is this a bug? No. I tried to do something else. It turns out this is how collection works. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't significantly affect drop-offs, but speaking of the overall impression, speaking of the quality of the game, it seems a bit off. This whole game is one big continuous math problem. It's one big economic cycle. For me as a player, I need to understand what to do in this economic cycle. So I have some basic resources like stones, resources, something else, but I wasn't taught how to gather them. So accordingly, they plan to create a big economic cycle for me. But in this economic cycle, I wasn't taught how to gather any base resources. Yes, I was taught to spend energy on something else. It seems this point needs more thought. Yes, it's important. I played the game for about an hour. I started the same moment three times. So everything I say is not super deep. I didn't analyze the economy. I didn't build difficulty curves. I also agree with Sasha here that it was hard to understand until I started using the hint where to gather what. Visually, it's not even clear where these circles are, on which grass, tree, that need to be changed later. All of this, especially on the phone, looks complicated and very small. Maybe if this is somehow improved, it will be better. It seems that the concept of porting was as follows. Let's just transfer it without considering the size of the small mobile screen. So the essence is as follows. On the web, you have a huge number of elements. This causes cognitive load. It's visual noise. I'm sure you have excellent top-notch artists, but just think about how to discuss this point. Again, girls, wow effects, foo foo foo. All tasks are completed in a very similar and very dry manner. I completed some task here on the left on the small screen. It's important, please also try with the sizes of the tiles, these task icons, because they are small. And these icons, they are extremely small. Here is a small green check mark on this green background for completion, and I didn't notice it. And I didn't see it at all until I figured out what to do next. 
it seems that after completing a task, it would be quite logical to make this icon a bit larger, add a nice check mark, and the player understands. They need to go and collect something. They come, collect it, there's an effect, wow, the reward pops up, everything is standard. The next point is that it became more fun when I wasn't alone. I saved some guy there, right? Well, I had to rescue him from the clutches of the Kraken. The next question is, if I choose a guy at the beginning of the game, will I save a girl? No. The next question is, as I understand it, according to this concept, it is somewhat similar to the concept of Family Island, where there is a normal heterosexual man and some girl. If I chose a girl, I would save a man because a guy with a girl means children, and a guy with a guy is not very good. So, what do I mean? Imagine I chose a girl, and then I save another guy. Why do I need a second guy? Give me a girl. Replacing the character is not difficult. In my mind, when I save, it looks like this, a division of labor into male and female roles. The man like builds, and the girl collects berries, clears the grass, roughly speaking. I mean, it turns out that maybe this point is worth considering. Are racially and gender correct men dropping out when you save another man? This is such a small, insignificant audience that I think we won't consider the 3.5 from racially and gender correct men who hardly play our games. Sorry, but this is such everyday sexism, financial. Financially, I understand. It's important to note that when I voice all these hypotheses, I mean that these are just assumptions, and it's important that I haven't seen your analytics, your revenues, and I don't have access to your financial reports. I had no data at all. From analytics, I have nothing. Another important point, the task pop-ups are very small. Even on the size of the 14 Pro, I open it, and there's something written, I'm in my 50s, I already need to wear glasses, and here are these tiny things. And our target audience is probably women, 40, 40 something, right? Maybe they already use glasses. So a bigger pop-up, larger font, everything prettier. It took me about seven tries to understand that to get to the Kraken, defeat it again, and get something, I need to reach level five. It's so small. So why? How to understand this? So making it bigger, prettier is important. Maybe on the web it's fine, here it just feels different. It's clear that the UI will have to be changed, redesigned, but again, the question of unit economics and integrity, what do we get with this money, how much will the feature cost us, and so on and so forth. I didn't understand my global goal in the game at all. So guys, what do I need to do in it? Tell me. Hmm? You need to survive. Play until the 60th day. I understand that I need to survive. It seems that to achieve a positive rose, I don't know, 100% rose on the 180th, on the 360th day. The longer we get here, we need to work on this. Maybe after reworking the FTUE, we can shift our ROAS from the 360th to the 300th day. But the 300th day, let's say. And that's something. Or we might be able to pause the acquisition and with a CPI of $3 per install, we can afford $3.10, but that's not certain. In what format is the task? It can be presented through a quest where they set some scary goal, the last final one. Or do you mean, no, no, no. Absolutely. I call it the standard narrative wrapper. If we take some survivalists, you were thrown somewhere, you want to return back, and for this, you need to build a boat, for example, a boat from some resources, and you run around these locations, no one will ever let you collect it. Technically, it doesn't lure you into spending three years and $300 on this game. So something like, wow, we need to build a settlement. Now we're going to build a ship. I need helpers. We're going to survive. This is a light, narratively weak wrapper that will never work in smaller games. But when we talk about farms, about girls, here the narrative can and should work. More precisely, it should and can work. I have a player profile, a pop-up, that this is, for example, some level... I only then realized that depending on my level, new types of resources become available to me, right? Yes, yes. 
It's a pity that I figured this out only on the fourth, fifth try when I purposefully, as a game designer, I don't know, as a person who has been doing game design and development for 14 years, only after I forced myself to click the buttons did I understand this. It seems that a very important stage of introducing the player to their profile might have been missed. Why should this profile be upgraded? All our actions are tied to energy. You spend energy, gain experience, which cycles into your profile, and you become better, gather more, unlock new things, and then you need new resources, new ones. Right now, this is not clear, and I would probably recommend thinking better about how to introduce the player to our profile. The profile is an important wrapper, as it seems to me. Well, if that's the case. Another point, read the comments. I don't understand why you hide the UI if you show such a small pop-up. Of course, hiding the UI and input happens when you have something big and you don't want someone to tap into the empty zone and collapse this pop-up. With such small pop-ups as you show, this is an additional cognitive load. You showed a pop-up, hit the UI, it came in, I closed the pop-up, and it came back a second later. There are two options here. Don't hide it, normal pop-up, balance of complexity. According to your calculations, how long does the energy last in the first game session? How many levels, minutes? It depends on the player's journey. As far as I know, about an hour. If they follow the quests, everything works out well. If they deviate from this path, everything starts to break down. Yes, there is a problem that needs to be solved. There are two options here. The first is to prolong the quest path, as I mentioned, through defining. This quest, this one, this one, this one. Yes, in the tutorial. Secondly, it needs to be re-evaluated because I didn't have enough energy for the first game session, even though I played and enjoyed it, to even reach the octopus. It seems like 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes, and my energy ran out. But I want our game session to be 30 minutes, 40, the median, not even the average, but the median. So it's worth thinking a bit about some balance, maybe reworking it somehow. Overall, how does this happen? This is very much related to the monetizer and everything else. So in the first game session, you try to give me two paywalls. More precisely, give me two conversion points. The first conversion point. So this, who is it? A sea lion with some currency, with hard currency, popped up. First, I was shown this pop-up. So the first thing I was shown was a pop-up for 1999 with hard currency. But the thing is, I haven't been taught how to use hard currency yet. I don't understand what this entity is, why I need it. It seems that there is a lack of understanding of the player's needs here, at what stage they are. And depending on this, the first offer can be different. So we talked a bit about personalizing offers, about defining and everything else. Never please guys operate. With time, when determining payer and non-payer, only behavior patterns are operated, you have some a priori data, right? Well, I mean, not even that. Time can be operated, but the first component is the user's behavior patterns. So we have a priori data, let's say 100,000 users. We determined that out of these 100,000 users, 3% are paying users, which gives us 3,000 users. We divide these 3,000 users into other cohorts, for example, PR5, 10, and so on, even up to whales. And if you look inside, each of these cohorts will have different behavior patterns. Some collect more of this, some complete more quests, some do more of this, more of that, and so on. By determining all this, you create a player profile. And then at the point of showing the offer, you personalize this offer, having the data that this person is 70%, 80% likely to be a whale. And we can immediately offer them a 49.99 or 99.99 offer and give something else to everyone else. Of course, this is a complex system and you will need a lot of A-B testing. It makes sense that price splits will be needed by platform, by geo and everything else. At the same time, it's important that I have a Polish App Store offer and the 1999 offer is probably expensive. So Poland is T2, roughly speaking, right? For example, a Pole won't pay as much as... This is probably where we need to work. Yes, the most important thing in an offer is perhaps not even the price, but the fact that I don't know the value of what is being offered to me. I have never used hard currency before. There was also talk about ads and everything else. So yes, this is my favorite. All non-payers are forced to watch ads. 
The question is defining these non-payers, the question of this definition. It needs to be defined. It seems that this is not complete monetization. The only point is that the difficulty balance curve probably needs to be reworked, roughly speaking. Here's the difficulty curve. We give additional income here, which means inflation starts. So any new source of income, whether soft or hard, is additional inflation. This means that prices will need to be raised in the future. How this will affect PRs with these prices, I can't say. So it's important that when introducing a new entity into the economy, it needs to be recalculated all the time, constantly working with the balance curve. And how will it affect? It could be the opposite. Here we sold 50 ads and here we lost a whale at $99. What else? It seems that your economy is whale-based. So, not even that. These projects are oriented towards a whale economy. A tricky question. How much money do I need to complete your game? A tricky question. We had many people who completed the game for free. Well, imagine I have money. And I say, I have money and pants for 40 hryvnias. How much do I need to spend to complete your game in a day? Okay, I'll rephrase the question. What is the monetization capacity? Good question. In what should it be measured? Monetization capacity is measured in what? In money? In hard currency? Do we even have such a calculation? Yes, it's actually a calculation. There's this one. This is Dima, where the silly VIP mechanic comes from, which I really don't like. But the guys keep it. And there are some points. VIPs were calculated for this approach. About $20,000 or something like that. The key goal. But again, the question is its speed. It's great that it's calculated in dollars, but the question is about time. There are people who gave $20,000 and significantly more. The question is over how many years, and this answer unfortunately won't please anyone. That's why I'm asking about the monetization capacity. Okay, do you have whales? Yes, of course. And what is their RPPU? No, I won't say specifically. I know more about the web. Dima, do we have ARPPU? No, I don't need it about the web. The web is another... Another universe. It's another universe. What you tell me? On mobile, not much yet. On mobile, air PPU is not much yet. Although, again, if I can say, well, as a payer. RPU is not much. Not much. A payer, it's just a few hundred dollars, not thousands. So far, that's it. How long do these guys usually live on average? Is there any definition usually? Predictably, quite likely years. We can't check 100% yet. They haven't completely died out so far. From three months, I don't know for sure. So, we are saying that our monetization amount is calculated at $60,000, but the maximums we get are conditionally a whale, a dolphin, around $250, $500. So, we need to find where the problem is. We need to specifically look at the difficulty curve and balance at the drop-offs where we have problems. Maybe they lack content here, maybe something else. So... It's important. I haven't delved deeply. I'm just sketching out ideas. So something like that, for example, considering that you have a whale economy, that's for sure. Look, you are pouring Facebook ads. Once you have some optimization on purchase, 100%, and you say that, well, you probably tried some, well, there was probably a CPI of $100. Yes, yes. Uh, the price is astronomical, unprofitable for us on the first event. We optimize for the first, well, like the first game event. So the character selection then? No, no, no. Even earlier, even earlier. Technically, the event is basically installed. Basically, it's installed. Ah, I see. So not even installed, but some first open. Yes, yes. The first event sent. Yes, yes. Installed for mobile. It's first open. Yes. Of course, it's worth thinking about ad monetization and all that. But there's a very important link here. I say when the guys tell me that we are buying on Facebook and it's expensive, I clearly understand that there should be a super long tail, the first conversion, the second, the third, and so on. And here, we don't even operate with RPD. We should operate only with these purchase cohorts. We don't rely on organic. That's clear. And another point. We take C1, the first conversion, and say that it happens. It happens at some point in time. The next question is, if it, as a distribution, lies on the time period graph, this is a hypothesis. It seems to me that in the first game session, it is not very high. It is closer to the second day, third, fourth. So, great. It means I am right. How smart I am. And then, since I am right and smart, we go back to the opposite. Personalization of offers in the first game session and adjustments in FTUE. 
And then due to this, it is possible that this conversion on the LTV graph, where we have the largest area, we can shift to the left. This is difficult, but maybe we can shift it to the left. Next experiments. Here we have a set of bundles. We offer you, here is such an offer, such, such, such. I converted on an offer for five. The next test for a person like me, instead of showing five, we show 10. Yes, we will drop the conversion, but in the long term, the LTV will grow. Well, they will take 10. They will take it twice, one and a half times. But what Sasha says is just an idea, this increased conversion, and that the second purchases, and the third, and so on. Thus, you will simply generate more LTV for yourself. Well, I think that's clear. Well, in general, I'm not saying that the graphics on mobile are from 2010. Hypothesis. You made this project for the web in 2016. No, it was in 2017. Yes, in 2017. Yes, because it is a port. These are two such ports. So, a bit with the hypothesis. If possible, some quick feedback. Hot. Was it useful? Was it not useful? What was the most useful? Good question. Of course, feedback. We need to prioritize some points for this project. Because as I mentioned at the beginning, we have many unresolved decisions here. Why did we decide to analyze this one specifically? Because in any case, there are some cases that we know ourselves. You showed us a lot, especially regarding advertising, diversification of traffic sources, and so on. Therefore, there is definitely something to work on. It's hard to overestimate the usefulness of this whole world for us. It directly helps us make further decisions. Plus, it's convenient that we can show the video to our team and to other projects. And maybe we will mature and with fresh projects with more updated graphics and tasty interfaces, as Alex said, we can look at them and also gather sometime. Are all your projects related to in-apps? Do you have experience with monetization through advertising or not? Yes, that was the second point, feedback. This is also the case we all talked about this morning. We discussed because our topic with advertising amortization is simply turned off. It's not even on pause. It's folded in the closet. And there we lose users. We lose profitability. At least it's not 100% irrecoverable, but at least partially reduce some costs. And this is also the second point that we want to include. That is, there are just mechanical topics that need to be merged into the team. And it's good when there are guys who have expertise in this because we didn't have this expertise accordingly. We never made money on advertising. That's true. And this is the second point, a topic that personally interests me, to revive it in our company. As I said, come over. We can not only explain, but we can help implement all of this in this regard. To say what endpoints there might be, how to set them up, which button to use, how to design it. We can just help with all of this in more detail. We already have a working tool for this. And as I said, it doesn't create as much load on the device as it did even two years ago. Yes, yes, 100%. Everything is great. Everything is wonderful. We will work on this project. What you have in the files, what we have noted down now. And I think we will come back in some form in the future, only in a definitely changed composition. There will be people more useful here than me. The main things I noted for myself are, of course, the inputs on monetization, because we are really struggling in this area. We either need to do it or not. Two paths. Since the audience is large, we can earn a little. If it's really just a couple of dollars, we can do nothing. If we can earn a decent amount, it makes sense. Secondly, the focus on segmentation. In fact, we think a lot about this when building cohort reports. It would be great to do proper segmentation by income, levels, types of purchases, all that stuff. But these are normal adjustments to the analytical block. We are working on this now. And when they are done, it will be a bit easier to breathe. What else is interesting? Well, it's very interesting and important and cool that there are, for example, numbers. This topic is about the ASO situation, what can be done and where to dig. Incentive promotion. Okay, it's clear where to go. For example, we are currently changing pictures and avatars. By the way, I already contacted our ASO expert and he said that there is indeed some bug. He will update and re-upload the video like it's really some kind of... Some kind of trouble happened. Of unknown origin. So these are probably the three blocks that I noted for myself, which, if they didn't provide new information, 
at least stirred up pain points that can no longer be ignored. That's what I'll say. Look, this is how I see it and what I think is the pain and problem of this project. You have, for example, an avocado, an avocado toast. This is a good thing. This is your web project that works and makes money. You know that in your hypothetical cafe, there are students who, for example, want tiramisu. Tiramisu is the mobile version. What happens? You make tier avocado. That is, you do not segment web users and mobile users, but mix different cohorts and different user experiments, for example. In such projects, doing the same monetization, the same game for a mobile device with an 8-inch diameter and for a screen with a 25-inch diameter, I think, is no longer possible. In general, my point of view is that it is necessary to separate... I'll throw in a spoiler answer. This is directly related to this thesis. Spoiler answer. We will probably come to you somehow with our new mobile project. Absolutely separately, where everything is done well like this, when it is properly released like this. Or it will already be too late. It's scarier when the porting problem is not in the ported project, but in another mobile project. So, it's also important here that you take all your developments, well, conditionally. Look, indies live by their own principles. Mobile developers by theirs. Console developers, PC developers, web developers. Each has their own principle. I don't know. Yes, it seems that the logic of game design, systems balance, is the same everywhere, but in any case, there are some, albeit minimal, differences. That is, the main thing is that you take something from your experience. Otherwise, I am sure that everything will be fine. Let's not forget that we look at such interesting insights on advertising and so on, thanks to the App Magic portal. The link to App Magic is in the description. By this link, you can get a few days of free full access.